Good evening and welcome back to my page. Today is Saturday, June the 2nd, 2016. I was going to do away with my political rants for about a month. And I know people are getting tired of hearing it, but you know, I came across an article the other day and uh, it's just been eating on me, so I'm going to have to talk about it. This thing is written by a uh, reporter named Garrett Gear. He reports for a lot of the political newspapers around. But anyway, and I'm not going to I'm not going to paraphrase. I'm going to quote because his article quotes an idiot by the name of Saul Alinsky. You'll get to know him here in a minute. But Mr. Garrett Gear says and I'm quoting from his article now, recalled that Hillary did her college thesis on his writings, and Obama writes about him in his books. Saul Alinsky died about 43 years ago, but his writings influenced those in political control of our nation today. He died on June 12, 1972, at Carmel-by-the-Sea, California. His education came from the University of Chicago. He wrote a couple of books. Rules for Radicals, Reveille for Radicals. And anyone out there that doesn't think this stuff's going on today has another thing coming, ladies and gentlemen. These are the rules currently in play, and they're right out of his book. How to Create a Social State by Saul Alinsky. He says there are eight levels of control that must be obtained before you're able to create a socialist state. The first is the most important, health care. Control health care and you control the people. Sound a little bit like maybe Obamacare? Because now they're requiring everybody to have it and you can go to jail if you don't or at least be heavily fined. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the first and foremost thing in Saul Alinsky's rules. And guess what? Mr. Obama put them right in there. Okay, on a second note, poverty. Increase the poverty level as high as possible. Poor people are easier to control. And they won't fight back if you're providing everything for them to live. And they don't. They just lay back. You see it every day. Go and pick up your welfare check and don't do a thing for it. Let the government feed you. And you'll follow them right to your own grave. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is debt. That's the number three. You increase the debt to an unsustainable level. That way you're able to increase taxes and this will produce more poverty. Well, $20 million by the time, I'm sorry, $20 trillion in debt by the time Obama's out of office. And that's a conservative figure. Okay, number four. Gun control. Remove the ability to defend themselves from the government. That way you create a police state. Well, what is Hillary doing and what is Obama doing right now? They're fighting like hell for gun control. But I'll let you draw your conclusion on that. Number five. Welfare. Take control of every aspect of their lives. Food, housing, and income. Education. Take control of what people read and listen to. Take control of what children learn in school. Now, if you'll remember the piece that I did here just last week, talking about removing all the books from the schools, I believe it was in Washington State, that re had anything to do with refuting global warming. Okay, that's what they're doing again. Now, number seven. Mind you guys, we've been watching all this go down for the last eight years, and some a bit before that. The next one, number seven, is religion. Remove the belief in God from the government and the schools. And that's what started with Madeline Murray O'Hare back in the, I think it was 1964, 66, when they took prayer out of schools. And they say that was a separation of church and state. And they got the Supreme Court to buy it. 
That has nothing to do with the way the Constitution wrote about the separation of church and state. But we'll let it go at that. I'm not going to argue that point right here. Now, number eight. And again, this is the last, but again, a very, very important piece. Class warfare. Divide the people into the wealthy and the poor. This will cause more discontent and it will be easier to tax the wealthy with the support of the poor. And Mr. Greer asks, does any of this sound like what's happening today in the United States? Alinsky, he merely simplified a theory by Vladimir Lenin, remember him? Lenin, well, some of you probably don't. He was the uh, premier of Russia. And that was his original scheme for world conquest by communism. We read that back when we were, uh, oh, I can remember probably when I was in the ninth or tenth grade. And that's been a long time back. But anyway, that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to rule the world by communism under Russian rule. Now, Stalin, who followed Lenin, described these converts as useful idiots. That's insulting. To me, it is. But he says the useful idiots have destroyed every nation in which they've seized power and control. It is presently happening at an alarming rate in the United States, says Mr. Gear. It is difficult to free fools from the chains that they revere. Now, I don't know what you got out of that, ladies and gentlemen, but I'll tell you what. I'm not happy. And I'm not going to be a useful idiot. If you elect to be a useful idiot, then so be it. But if you elect Hillary Clinton, if we allow Hillary Clinton to get into office, and give Obama another eight years. That's exactly what's going to happen. And you watch, every one of these rules is going to be put into place. And we, ladies and gentlemen, are going to be a socialist, if not a communist nation. Anyway, that's my rant for today. Please pass this on. This is very important that people get to learn about this. Pass it on. Please like and subscribe to my page. And... Have a great day and come back and visit me again. Thank you.